Grandmaster Willie Adams of Southfield Martial Art Karate Two, uh, here today to give you some hints on self-defense that will be helpful to you. Uh, very simple. Also, I'd like to thank my Grandmaster for uh, the lessons they taught me, Grandmaster Nagel, Grandmaster Armstrong, Grandmaster Long, and Grandmaster Mitchell, and Grand Grandmaster Hong Lee. Now again, I say I'd like to give thanks to these gentlemen because they were very helpful in my understanding of the martial art and they're responsible for what I am today. Okay, now the first thing I would like to do is go through something simple, uh, some simple advice. Like we were taught as kids to stop, look, and listen. Uh, I think that was a little bit far-fetched that when they told us to stop, look, and listen because my sensei told me you can hear a car coming before you can see it. And so we say stop, listen, look. Because the eyes can see 180 and the ears can hear 360. So when you go in your car, uh, sometimes they tell you, like, look all around before you get in your car and so forth like that. But my sensei told me, listen all around, then proceed and look and go to your car. And also another thing too is, uh, if you're standing in line, like in a grocery store or something like that, you know, my sensei told me, if someone's behind you like this and you can't see them, that means all your karate is gone to waste because you're in complete control of this person behind you. This person might have an attitude or something like that, who knows? I might have had a bad day because you're in front of me because you, you know, maybe you thought you took cuts or anything. So my sister always said in the bank or anything else, stand to the side. In, in this way, I can always see my opponent if he tries to do something to me or anything happens, I can automatically react to it by being off to the side. Now, personally myself, I feel very uncomfortable somebody Right behind me, and I can't see him back there because I don't know. I, I you know, by training, I developed this instinct of feeling that somebody's close to me. Same thing, a lot of you, I can tell you, a lot of you probably were sleeping in the bed at night, and someone came and looked over at you, you woke up right away because we got this vibration that this sense of feeling that it, it's a, a method of self defense. Like animals can tell when something's wrong, if you're evil, or something like that because they got a sense. They can't talk or anything, but they got a sense of feel. We all gifted with this. And so use this yourself. So if I'm standing in line like this, I feel very uncomfortable because I don't know how close this person is. He's not doing anything to me, but it feels like somebody just on me like this because after all my training, all my martial arts out the window because I give it up. So this way, I stand in like this when I'm walking. I just make it inconspicuous so that I walk like this and move in the line. And I might turn a little bit and turn back. As long as I keep my eye on my opponent at all times. Now, the other thing is that if you if your opponent's behind you or something and 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 you feel very uncomfortable, uh, like a lot of times like in the store now they've got the six foot distance. I've seen in the store that people violate that. They they and they look at you to wait for you to try to say something to them. So they want they want to attack you or anything or something like that uh, because they like you don't like what I'm doing or something because you know the lot the X is there and you look at them and you look at them kind of funny. Where the first thing they do, they want to fight. So my job is always try to avoid confrontation. So we have some guard position that we never let our guards down. We either hold our hands like this. A lot of you don't fold your hands like this in. This is not very good because my opponent come at me, it's going to be kind of hard to get those hands. I'm like, just going to a guard position. We take our hands like this and place them under like this. And my opponent tries something funny or something like this. I'm right here and I can strike him right away. Because my hands are right here, they slip right out like this into a guard position and strike my opponent right into the throat. Notice I'm going to all the body areas. I'm not trying to strike them straight in here like this. Another thing, I've had people come up to me on the street, a lot of you have the same thing too, that beggars and so forth. And what generally what I do is my other fighting position is my guard position. I said, sir, look, I don't have any money. I wish I could help you. I don't have any money. Please. Don't come close to me, please don't. Notice my guard hand is up at all times. I'm not, sir, I don't have any money like this, boom, you're gonna hit me in the face or something like that. No, you keep your head, sir, look, I don't have any money, I wish I could help you. This is my fighting guard right here. He throws a punch or something like that, I got my shield. Remember I said about the shield? This is the shield, he throws a punch, if he tries to strike me, I'm off to the side, I got my shield here. The punch come this way, I got my shield here, I step here, and strike him right in the side of the throat like this. Again, when you're dealing with someone in the street, this person could be on drugs or whatever or something like that, you better start striking parts of the body in regards to if he's under any type of influence or whatever that's going to make him go down, whether he feels it or not. My job is, I don't care if he feels the blow, I just want him to go down to the ground when I hit it. 
Okay, so again, that shield. Remember, we, in our, our lesson on the shield, we had the shield where you came up with the shield like this, and I know he can't come inside my shield here, and I strike him to the side and throw it here, like this. And also, another thing too, sometimes when he's close on me like this, and, and they said, well, look, I want to talk to you. And they, I said, sir, I don't have anything for you. And then right here, right, get it right under the nose, right here. Then you, then you can come to the lower parts of the body. But you said, here, sir, I don't have any money. <coughs> right in like this, right away. These are fighting guards. I said, sir, I don't have any money. Please, I wish I had some. I'd give you some. This is part of your fighting guard. My other fighting guard, very inconspicuous, is when I have on my chin like this. I stand there talking to someone like this. I'm talking, and I got my hand, I'm standing in line at a grocery store. I got my hand under here like this. This is a fighting position. They don't know this. But see, from here, I'm standing here, and now all of a sudden, when my shield comes up again here. My shield comes up here, and it's striking my point right to the nose from here. Notice my hand, my shield comes up, fist closed, strike right to the nose like this, and then you can finish off your opponent. So when you have your guard hand up, like I'm standing here like this, then sometimes, if I see, him coming with the round punch this way, sometimes I just straight, go straight to strike like this, then strike him with this. Notice how I came around, I'm going to the angle. I see the punch coming in my hand here. Remember, I can see the punch coming right here. Now, a lot of you maybe not be experienced as I am, but I got an invisible shield. I have a shield here. I can see myself going here with the shield, then come in here like this, using the shield. I, this was the shield, I use the shield to strike him, then I come in and strike him in the nose. But when I'm, my, my hand is here, I go straight to the side of the neck here, then straight down on the base, base of the nose like this. Okay, these, notice I'm coming always in on an angle. I'm never fighting my opponent head on. So when he's, the power's coming here, I go with the flow of the power. Here, like this, and then strike it here. Then I strike to the nose. Then you come back, if you want, strike it to the solar plexus. Remember, you're going high, low, inside, outside when you strike it. But make it a direct attack. Don't draw back to hit anyone. Go straight. When you talk to your opponent, you talk and say, Sir, I don't have any money. This is my fighting guard, like this. One like this is a fighting guard. This is a fighting guard. This is a guard. Like this, right away. You're right here to go get ready to go strike at your opponent right away. And these are very quick strikes. Now you have to remember, you notice I have all open hands. I mean, you can't go, you can't go in the street like this and say, Sir, I don't have any money. Uh, here, what do you want? <laughs> I mean, that is, that's not practical. See, you give yourself away, you go like this, what do you want? Uh, I don't have any money. <laughs> yeah, no, you go like this, it's, it's very unthreatening, but this is a fighting position. And you gotta remember, open hands go faster than closed fists. Remember, you can, you can close your fist faster than you can open it. So try it with that. See if you can close your fist and then see how quick you can open it. So open hands move very, very fast. And you remember I said before, you always keep your longest weapons out there. Shoot those like this, shoot those, cut through the wind and you strike it. Also, you got your eye gouging, striking, striking in the eyes, going straight in your opponent's eyes right away. Just, you don't have to like trying to blind him or anything like that. You just want to temporarily set him up. Then you go for that shot, right? That's going to do the damage on your opponent. So many people say, I want to, like Americans, like Grandmaster Lee told me, Americans want to throw the home run punch like the John Wayne. They want to, <laughs> like, they want to come with that John Wayne punch. He says, in China, we go very quick. You know, everything's got to be quick. Right away, just strike. Then if you want a John Wayne, then you can do it. He said, but don't go for the John Wayne. Well, I'm going to hit you like this. All of a sudden, that doesn't work. Make sure your technique is very quick. And no matter what your opponent do, I don't care how big you are or whatever you are, if you understand the principle of using a shield, coming in and striking your opponent like in the eyes, and set him up and strike him in the throat, you got to do some damage. I don't care who you are. Nobody wants to walk into a closet with spikes in it. <laughs> and you walk in a closet like this, like this, that's what's happening when you, you do this like this. Or that's what happens when you throw a punch at me, you're going to walk in some spikes. You're going to walk right into spikes like this. And also today, I'm going to also teach you something that 10 cents, 10 pennies to save your life. As I was saying, 10 pennies could save your life. Let me give you a little history. The grandmasters in the old days used to be walking the streets and walking through the villages and so forth. And sometimes they call them brigands. These are, you know, people that were what they call the bad guys and so forth. You used to attack them and they, they had gotten up in age, like maybe 80, 90 years old. And they, they don't have as much flexibility as they used to have before, but they still were grandmasters. They had plenty of tricks up their sleeve. 
what they used to do is walk around and pick up tin pebbles off the ground, and that would be, they would use that when they're going in and out of different locations and stores and stuff. And nowadays, this is how we do an update. We don't walk around picking pebbles up off the ground anymore. We have tin pennies, so we represent tin pennies instead of the tin pebbles. You use it to represent tin pennies that could save your life. Now, how, you say, how can that come about? Now, tin pennies can be used almost like buckshot. Now, when somebody's coming up on you, you walk into your car, you carry tin pennies. I used to do seminars for elderly citizens and stuff like that. Instead of people telling you, use your car keys to strike a guy in the eyes, use this and that. Tin pennies work just as well, even much better, because it covers a vast area. When it spreads and you throw, it, 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 it covers a very wide area, and each one of those little pieces of the penny striking at different nerve centers on the, on the face and so forth is very painful. All you need is a split second of distraction, and I guarantee that you're not going to miss. Now, sometimes I used to tell some of my elder citizens, uh, please watch this when you do it at home practice. Take 10 pennies and get a board or something at, at home and throw those 10 pennies up against the wall, and you'll see the damage that it does just by throwing it. Now, you can throw 10 pennies this way, backhand, you can be back like this, turn around, striking this way, or you can be head on, step to the side and throw on this way, or you just come straight up with them into the face, but throw it like, like you're throwing a baseball like this, and then spread and strike your opponent. Now, once you execute the, the pennies going out, then that's when you come back with your follow throughs of your opponent to finish them off. Now, very effective. Now, you take the pennies, they don't have to be rolled up in a, in a roll or something like that. They can be just like this, or they can just be loose in your hand like this, either way. As long as they're like this. So, as long as you got it in your hand like this, you got your car keys, you're going into your car or something like that, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, people say, oh, he came from nowhere. No, he had to come from somewhere. <laughs> Nobody just come from nowhere. I mean, if you use your ears, you'd have heard him coming. So, again, Listen, 360, so you'll know he, he came from that direction, okay? So, I'm walking down the street, then all of a sudden, I, uh, my opponent jumps, he's coming at me at a distance. This could work at from, from six, seven, eight feet away or something like that. Uh, and he's coming at me like this, all of a sudden, <laughs> hey -ya, hey -ya. 